Hello everyone, my name is Alana Schwab and I'm a hat designer based in London. Welcome to my studio. It's Monday, beginning of the week, and I'm really excited to see you all here. And I hope you had a wonderful weekend and already having a wonderful start of the week. Today, um, we're going to talk about cinnamon straws and I'm going to show you a really cool technique of how to make this fabulous little bow. So the whole session um, today is going to be dedicated to cinnamon straws, specifically um, leftover materials or offcuts that sometimes you don't know what to do with them because they are too small to make a hat or use for decoration, but you feel kind of sorry to throw it out. Uh, we've been talking about felts um, on this particular subject and we have this amazing uh, tutorial that is on my YouTube channel. You are welcome to go um, and look uh, at this tutorial. There are a lot of useful tips. Um, and I also promise that we're going to make another tutorial about straws um, because, um, in, you know, there are always little pieces that... Uh, you have left from one project or another, different colors, beautiful colors, and it's really a shame to throw them away because, you know, materials at the end of the day, they do cost money, uh, but then you don't know what to do with them because they're too small. Like, for example, I have a lot of uh, pieces left in my studio, especially after workshops, because um, I have a lot of students coming and we make a lot of cinnamon straw hats. Obviously, a lot of, a lot of, uh, different materials that I can't really use. And obviously I can't make a hat uh, with them, but uh, I was playing with the uh, materials and I came up with this really cute technique, uh, this little uh, bow, which is really easy to make and it could be a very fun project uh, uh, working with your child. Ideally, I would recommend the age seven or six um, if uh, your child is quite confident with using tools such as um, scissors or uh, needles, but you can always help your child uh, with these tools and let um, your kid to do the fun part. So you decide whether you want to do this with a kid, uh, with your child. I think it's really amazing um, time to spend together as you can make really amazing uh, little bows or, um, you know, tie bows as well. I mean, it's your imagination what you can do. Uh, it's also good um, fun to, uh, with girls and with boys. You know, can you, can you, uh, you can just come up with the really amazing um, ways of how you implement this technique that I'm going to show you. So, um, all we need, all we need just some pieces of cinema. I have quite a few to choose from, and you see they're quite small. Uh, we need scissors. We're gonna need a headband, choose any color you like. Um, we're gonna need threads, a matching color, and we're gonna need a whole set of pins and needles, a thimble if you're more comfortable working with it, uh, small scissors for threads, um, iron steamer, or you can just use a regular iron and a separate uh, and a steamer separately. So for these purposes, I might use a kettle. Uh, it works wonderfully well, but be careful. Um, don't let your kid uh, work with a steamer because it's quite um, dangerous to always take, take it over. And we also might need a veil. I also have some leftover um, of cuts of veils that again you don't really know what to do with these little pieces because it's again not enough um, to make a hat but again you always think okay what I'm gonna do with these pieces I'm gonna keep it for now and then I'll come up with the, some kind of a um, solution so at the end what it happens is that all these little pieces they are um, dusting some way in one of your drawers and you still have no idea what to do with them well today we're gonna solve at least one of these problems Okay, so we're gonna choose colors. Um, so I think we're gonna go for two colors to make it colorful. Uh, this one, for example, I made in a combination with purple and uh, what it was, it was blue and grayish. So it, um, I, I put these two um, layers together and as a result it looks a bit purplish so it's always fun to combine different colors together so how about we'll try use gray it's a really nice bluish bluish color 
yeah, blue and this lovely, lovely green, very beautiful green color. So we're gonna choose these two pieces and I'm gonna put the rest aside. Uh, you know, cinnamons also come in a variety of different textures. They also come as a plain color uh, with metallic thread, larix thread, with parting. So there's a lot of combinations you can choose from. You can go for dark, very dark and very bright color, like um, red and ivory. And the combination could be very interesting, sort of like orangey color. So it's up to you to choose what combination you like. So first of all, I need to give a really good ironing to this, um, to my pieces of cinnamon straw. And I'm using steam iron. But if you don't have a steam iron, it's okay. You can always use just dry iron. And, oh, that's what I didn't mention, a spray bottle. Uh, just regular tap water. We don't need anything fancy. And I'm also going to iron this piece. Oh, but what else we're going to need is baking paper. I think most of us have it in the kitchen, so it's quite an easy tool to have. And so I'm going to place one. Let me move this. So I have more space. So I'm going to place one piece on top of another sort of like making as a sandwich. See, so I have two different sides. And yeah, so we have kind of like sandwich, bias to bias. Very much important that um, uh, the direction of the yarns, they are the same. So don't, don't do it randomly because we will need um, the direction of the bias because it's the most flexible, most stretchy part of cinema straw, like any other woven straw. And yes, yeah, so I'm placing two together and I'm gonna spread with a little bit of water. Also important to remember that ideally you would like to use a pretty stiffened cinema straw um, because uh, uh, what the benefit of stiffener in the straw, uh, when you apply water, it acts like a glue. So in this situation where I place the material, uh, one layer on top of another, I spray it with a little bit of water. So it makes the, the material slightly damp, not too wet, just damp. And the moisture extracts the stiffener, which acts like a glue. And then it helps for both layers to bond together. So this is what we're aiming for. Uh, two layers become as one. I'm gonna need another layer of baking paper. Some sort of like sandwiching both of the layers together and I'm pressing with my iron and I'm ironing both layers together and we'll see what happens. Okay, this is also a technique that you can uh, use for any type of decorations that you're making using cinnamon straw. Um, I have a really lovely tutorial uh, about how to make a fan uh, using two layers and I'm using a very similar technique to that. So I'm putting two layers together and then I spray with a little bit of water and I give a good pressing and ironing. And so pressing is very, very important. Okay, so let's check. Okay, so now you see both layers layered together. They bonded very nicely and it's like one piece now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut um, rectangular. Right, so first of all, I'm gonna trim this off because I don't need it. And I'm gonna trim the edge nicely because I need a straight line doesn't have to be super straight, but, um, you know, the straighter the better. <laughs> and, yep. So what I'm going to do with this side, just put this over there. I'm going to spray with a little bit of water, not too much, just a little bit of water to soften the straw, because otherwise when the straw is dry, you can easily break it. And we need the straw to be quite, quite 
um, soft, but not too much. And then I'm folding the fabric, like about a quarter of an inch um, or half a centimeter, half a centimeter on the bias. Because again, we need that really nice stretchy side so that uh, at the next step, uh, I'm gonna show you how we can um, manipulate the straw with a steam in order to um, give it a really nice shape. So you see, I folded the straw about half a centimeter and I'm going to press and iron that fold so, so that it sticks to the surface of our piece. So what we are aiming for is, you see, nice and flat um, edge. And neatly and accurately, you continue ironing. You can also, um, to secure the edge, you can also give it um, a sewing machine stitch, like just a regular running stitch to keep it in place, or you can just leave it as it is because, you know, stiffen is quite strong. But obviously, stitching with a sewing machine is, is a very, very nice and solid um, um, way of securing the edge. And now I'm gonna trim this side. So basically you have to choose how wide you want the piece to be. I'm, I'm gonna go for, for something like that, just to show you the idea of what we're making. But then when you have your cinema straws, depending on how big uh, pieces you have, uh, you're gonna decide how wide you want the bow to be. It can be a very wide bow, it can be um, a small bow, and then I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to spray with a little bit of water. And I'm going to fold inside, again, quarter of an inch or half a centimeter. And try to make a straight line. Yeah. And again, same thing. Press with the iron. Okay. And while I'm ironing, I want to say hello to everyone who joined. It's lovely to see you all. Thank you for wonderful comments. And I'm really happy to hear that you enjoying uh, the tutorials. It really, it's, it's really important to me. Thank you so much. And you see, um, I'm really always trying to come up with different uh, different options and ideas so that you can also practice and learn more about this amazing craft of millinery and share this love that I have for this amazing craft. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for uh, joining my membership where I share um, even more detailed uh, videos for those who want to learn hat making in details. And thank you so much for everyone who supports my channel. I'm very, very grateful to all of you. So now this is the width of, this is the length of our piece. So I'm just gonna trim right here. So I'm gonna cut off this little um, triangle just to make it the one side and then another side. Again, uh, very much important that it's on the bias. Okay, so we have this little piece. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna steam it. So what happens when we steam cinema straw? It becomes very, very, very flexible. And this is when we can create different amazing shapes. So you see, I folded cinema straw and I folded it because I steamed it so, and it became very soft so I can manipulate the straw. If it was um, stiff and not steamed, believe me, it would be really, really hard to, uh, to fold it. Okay, I think I have, um, so, and, and now, so again, you can either uh, use a little bit of glue right here 
to uh, secure the edges or you can use a sewing machine and just uh, create really um, basic uh, st uh, straight line running stitch. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Or you can stitch with your uh, with a hand stitch. It's up to you how you would like to do it. Uh, I'm just going to skip this step so we, we progress a little bit faster so that I can show you how to continue. And then I'm folding these two ends towards each other. And they meet here right in the middle. Okay. And now... Okay, and you see they have really lovely uh, color, a combination of blue and this amazing green. And because they're two layers of different colors, they look really nice together. So it's sort of like um, the color becomes even deeper um, in its shades. So I'm going to apply a little bit more steam to soften the straw. And then I am going to fold the bow towards the center. Ta -da! Isn't that cute? They're actually color matching here. I didn't even think about it, but look at that. It's really color matching. So you see, it's very, very easy. And why, how we managed to do that? Thanks to the steam. So you can imagine what steam can do um, with cinema straw. Every, um, every time you steam cinema straw, you can start manipulating it. It's like working with clay. It's really, really, really fun. So again, now the fabric is quite stiff, so I can't really do anything. And now look at that. I'm steaming just a little bit. And you see the fabric is like really starts moving because it becomes so, so flexible. So I'm giving a little bit of steam. I'm keeping uh, the center together. And now while the fabric is still warm see i can manipulate the straw giving a different shape so now you don't really have much time because the steam uh cools um the material cools down really fast and when uh, it cools down it means that it becomes quite stiff again it means that you have to start steaming um again so the whole process is going to be uh steaming shaping steaming shaping steaming shaping until you're happy with the shape until you are happy with uh, how the little bow uh, looks like so i'm just going to shape this side as well a little bit be careful with your hands obviously steam is very very hot and now i'm going to shape it a little bit more okay and it looks really 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 cute and also because it's on the bias you can stretch the bow a little bit to soften the lines here so you can you can see the difference where I stretched a little bit because it's on the bias and we can do exactly the same here on this side okay so there if it wasn't on the bias I wouldn't be able to do that but because the fabric on the bias you can stretch it a little bit and yep this is how it looks like so what we need to do now is stitch the center with a thread. So I'm going to use, it's not exactly the right color. And we're going to use ideally long needle, double thread, long needle, because it would be easier to go through the, uh, through all the layers. Oh, did it come through? Okay. It's getting harder and harder. Okay. Okay, that might take a while. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Managed. Double thread cut. And I might use a thimble because, you know, a lot of layers of cinnamon straw. Um, so it will be much easier if I'm just going to use a symbol and I'm just going to give a good, I'm just going to stitch all the layers together to keep them in place. And yeah, and this too. So if you have any questions, please do ask. As usual, during live sessions, I'm happy to answer the questions. Um, about this tutorial or anything else that you're interested in about hat making um, or or anything else 
and just a little bit of a stitch one two three and i'm just gonna cut this all right so now it's secured and what we can do as well so we have this little uh, off cuts um still well available so what are we gonna do again on the bias uh, we're gonna do um a bias strip to cover this part and to adjust it let's use the white one so you can easily see and to secure the bow on the headband so again i'm just going to give it quick ironing just so that make sure that the layers um, attached securely together and i'm gonna fold one of the sides to cover the edge because we want it to look nice and neat and there a little bit of pressure okay, i might just apply a little bit of water so it attaches um better So this is going to be a really fun project with your kids, your grandkids. Um, I mean, um, whatever comes to ironing and stitching, sewing, uh, you can cover this part because uh, that could be quite challenging for, for kids. But the rest, um, like folding the material, uh, uh, spraying with water, that would be quite fun. And... Um, also creative and your child will feel so great knowing that uh, they could also participate in the process and create something really really amazing they can actually uh, wear like a bow headband for a girl or a very cool uh, cool and um, nice uh, you know bow for boys so it could be like a, for a performance uh, we have uh, holidays coming up soon mother's day uh, so you can just create this little fun project as part of the celebration okay so that might be okay so here we are so i i bonded um attached all the layers together folded and now we have this really nice strip of uh, material which i'm gonna start from here underneath okay so basically first i would place the headband um, where I want it to be and then I'm gonna wrap with with a strip that we have kind of um, so I'm gonna fold one of this other sides so we want it to look really nice and neat and also it helps to prevent the straw from fraying okay so we're attaching to the headband and placing one side underneath and covering it and covering with the other side underneath okay so that um so the headband is already inside and it's quite secured and now what we have to do is just to use a little bit of um pins to secure and and then secure with this with the with the stitching uh, you can't really use sewing machines so hand stitching is what you have to do again you can use a thimble ideally matching thread but i just prepared this one you start underneath here so that you hide the knot because you don't want to see um a knot sticking out and then you just stitch through and secure the headband together with the bow it also helps when you use a satin covered headband so that in some cases you can stitch through the fabric in order to secure uh, your hats fascinators um, and this is like an advice in general uh, when you attaching your hats to headbands and okay a few more stitches and then the next step we can either leave it as it is if you're happy with it or 
Um, we can add a little bit of veil. It's always fun to add a little bit of veil. And so the question, what thread am I using? Uh, I'm using cotton thread uh, at this moment. Um, okay. Yeah, this is a cotton thread. And now I didn't, I didn't stitch through headband specifically for this project because now you can move um, your headband uh, and a bow. It's still secured. Um, so if, for example, you're making it for a kid, uh, for a child, it's best maybe you leave the headband unattached to uh, like leave the bow unattached to the headband so you can move it. But if you make a hat for a client or um, to wear somewhere, um, you would like to secure the headband as well to, to satin the headband so that it does move and it really, really secured. So here we are. It looks a bit, um, yeah, it could be fun. It could be fun. And now we can use a little bit of um, veiling. So for example, I have this black piece of veiling. I'm gonna steam it as well. Um, would you advise using hot glue? Well, first of all, I really don't like hot glue. First of all, you um, it's not that great uh, way of securing your hats and fascinators because as any glue, at some point, it falls off. Second of all, you can always see it, especially hot glue, it, it leaves like a big chunky marks um, on your hat. So if you're using hot glue, use it somewhere inside of the hat so you can use, you can't see it, but I would always advise to hand stitch your hats anyway, because it's nothing is compared to hand uh, stitching. It's always much better than a glue. And if I'm using a glue, it's only to keep the material in place while I'm securing with a thread. So that would be my advice, but Again, very much depends what kind of hats you're making. And sometimes there's no way, but you kind of have to use the glue, especially for like plastic fabrics or fabrics that you can't really stitch through. So in these cases, I would suggest, yes, a hot glue or um, any other fabric glue might work. Okay, so um, it's a lovely, 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 lovely veil. I love veils. It's always fun to have veils. Um, so you can either first stitch the veil and then cover it with this, uh, with this part, or you can just play with the veil and, uh, stitch it like on top right here. If you don't want it to go through, like be in the middle, you can just stitch it, um, on top, or you can just wrap around with the veil. So there's like a lot of different options, um, to play with. So this, uh, you can, uh, this creative part you can give to your kids, to your grandkids uh, to play with and see what kind of creative ideas they might come up with and how they would like to uh, manipulate the veil. And sometimes you will be surprised what amazing solutions they come up with. And you think, oh my God, I would never thought of that creative way, how amazing it is. So um, I'm just going to leave it as it is right here. I'm going to tuck it like there but obviously i would secure it with a pin at the moment i'm just going to put it secure with i mean obviously i will secure with the stitching but at the moment i'm just going to secure it with the little pin and uh, one side and another side and yeah so there we have a really lovely fun project um a bow with a veil so i made a, a, a bow it's it's a bit smaller size and this one is a little bit bigger i have another one somewhere somewhere here oh it fell off oh there or oh, that's another uh bow uh, really really lovely and um you know with the veil that i stitched underneath so you see it and silver, silver and pink, they all look really lovely together. So there's so many, um, so many different options that you can create uh, using this technique. Small bow, big bow. Uh, this is like one layer cinema straw. It doesn't have necessarily to be two layers, but it's nice when you have um, 
different colors, uh, different layers, so that you can then play with um, with the shade of the cinnamon straw, like a contrast of white and red or black and silver, or combining a regular plain weave cinnamon straw with silver or with a metallic thread. Um, so there, I think it was fun and informative. And please, um, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss uh, my next tutorials. Uh, please sign up to my membership where you can uh, get access to very um, detailed tutorials uh, that I publish uh, every week or every two weeks. And right now we're working on cinema. We're learning how to block a cinema straw hat about a hat from start to finish this is a really amazing tutorial for anybody who would love to learn how to make hats and um, also all my members can always ask for some tutorials that they would like to learn some skills they would like to cover and i would gladly create another tutorial that you are specifically looking for so any questions, please do ask. You can always uh, message me or um, comment and I will always come back to you with the reply and suggestions. And I'll see you next time during my next uh, video. I have no idea what it's going to be about, but I'm sure it's going to be fun. You can always leave um, comments if there's anything that you would like to learn about. And uh, thank you so much, everyone who joined. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know if, um, if you decided to make something like that. And I would love to see your photos and images uh, of finished uh, hats and pieces. Wishing you a fabulous day and see you soon. Bye.